A shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the shadow belongs. Today's story, Death Shows the Way. Uh, walked, cheer, dum de dum de dum knocked him in the old Kent Road. Oh, uh, Walter... Alan. Uh, yes, Mr. Cranston. Walter, cheer, lum ti dum ti dum Alan! Doctor, yes, sir. dum ti dum ti dum Alan, bum, what bum, in the world bum. are you doing? Taking your clothes, sir. Uh, now, just a minute, Alan. I'm going away for the weekend. Not a trip around the world. Well, these are all necessities, sir. Now, look, Alan. All I need is a change of linen, a toothbrush, and a razor. I'm sorry, sir, but that's impossible. What do you mean? I mean that I shan't send you any place without the proper appointments. Oh, I have nothing to say about it, is that it? Uh, quite correct, sir. Love. Uh, well, I will say something about it, and right here. Now, no, look, Alan, you come here. There. May I come in? Oh, hello, Margot. Come ahead. Are you all ready to leave? Uh, not quite. I have to settle a small point with Alan first. Oh, I bet I know what it is, too. Something to do with your weekend wardrobe? Yes, exactly. Alan, for the last time, I'm telling you not to pack my bags full of all that junk. It's the hunting jacket, golf shoes, dinner clothes, riding boots, business... Oh, yes, yes, fishing tackle, fishing... Did you hear me, Alan? Uh, quite so, sir. A suede jacket, polo shirt, tennis shorts... Then why don't you do as I say? Because, as I've told you before, Mr. Cranston, you shan't go to the Bartons unless you're correctly turned out. And that, if I may display firmness, sir, is final. There, you're all packed. But the Bartons don't care whether I'm correctly turned out or not. It isn't the Bartons that I'm trying to impress, sir. Then who is it? Their butler. What? To... No. <laughs> Come on, pick up your bags, Lamont. You've lost again. <laughs> Sometime before this weekend is over, Lamont, we must have the Count tell us about his marvelous experience on Capri. No, no, Mrs. Barton. I'm afraid it would be too long and dull for Mr. Cranston. Why, not at all. That's my specialty. Long, dull stories. I collect them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Henry, what a beautiful dog. When did you get him? Oh, just the other day. Yeah. Uh, come here, Major. Where do you call that kind of dog? Uh, great Dan. He's a big, ferocious looking beast. Yeah, now lie down, Major. <laughs> uh, how about some crackers and cheese, you people? Oh, that's for me, Henry. Okay, help yourself. Oh, Henry, that's a nice way to talk to a guest. Uh, what do you mean, guest? When Lamont Cranston spends a weekend with us in the country, he's a member of the family. <laughs> well, thanks, Henry. <laughs> Say, speaking of members of the family, who's that young fellow approaching across the lawn? Yes, dear. Do I have to, Mommy? Did he say Mommy? Why, Helen, I didn't know. Helen. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. I didn't tell you that Henry and I adopted a child a couple of months ago. Oh, I see. Do I have to, Mommy? Now, Skippy, I want you to meet some friends of ours. Miss Margot Lane, Mr. Cranston, and Count Santa. Hello, Skippy. Hello, Skippy. Hello, do I have to have my face washed, Daddy? Well, judging by its appearance, it wouldn't do any harm. Oh, I think you'd better go in and do what Nurse tells you to do. I don't want to. Daddy promised me a story. Daddy will tell you a story after dinner. Run along now. I don't want to. Oh, dear, what'll I do? Oh, I know, Henry. Call the dog. Tell him it's his new pet. Maybe that'll please him. Here, Major. Come here, boy. There, there. Now, look, Skippy. See what your mother and I bought for you? Oh, a doggy. Hello, nice dog. Hey, Major, Major. Get back to the house. Hey, that dog is vicious. Now, Helen, Daddy. don't get excited. The dog just isn't used to children, that's all. Now, Skippy, you run along. Daddy, are you going to tell me a story after dinner? I'm afraid not, son. Daddy has a very important business date after dinner. But you promised. Now, run along, Skippy. Mommy will be up to see you later. I don't care. Daddy promised to tell me a story. Oh, now, see Daddy. what you've done, Henry. I can't help it, Helen. You know that Mr. Knight from Taylor and Company is coming here tonight with your necklace. But, Henry, you promised... Now, darling, we have guests here, remember? <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed the little visit backstage in the home life of the bar. <laughs> oh, we loved it. <laughs> you uh, spoke of a necklace, Mr. Barton. Is it the same one that I read about your buying in the newspapers? Uh, yes, the Great Harvey Diamond. The Great Harvey? Have you bought that, Henry? Yes, they are bringing it here tonight. Well, isn't that the jewel with the great legend attached to it? Legend? What is the legend, Miss Lane? Why, I believe the story is that it brings misfortune to whoever owns it. Isn't that it, Henry? Hmm, some such silly yarn, yes. I take it, then, that you do not believe in this legend, eh, Mr. Barton? Huh? Why, of course not. You're a brave man, Mr. Barton. A very brave man. Mr. Barton, 
I trust that you've arranged to keep the necklace in a safe place. At least until you've paid me in full. Oh, naturally, Knight. <laughs> well, I guess our business is finished here, then. I imagine you'd like to get back to your guests. No, on the contrary. I find it very difficult to tear myself away from this necklace. Beautiful stone. Daddy. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it's all right, Skippy. You can come in. Skippy, this is Mr. Knight, a business friend of your father's. Mr. Knight, this is my son. How do you Daddy, do? Daddy, when are you going to tell me that story? Huh? And Mommy said you're so forgetful. Did you think to offer Mr. Knight a drink? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mommy is well. right as usual. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Knight, will you forgive me and let me make you up one for the oversight? Well, now that you mention it, I wouldn't mind having a drink. It's a long drive back to town. Well, how do you have it? Uh, straight, please. Water on the side. Straight it is. There you are. Thank you. Uh, aren't you drinking, Mr. Barton? Uh, no, I... Uh, I've been on the wagon lately. Oh, that's too bad. Well, here's to the great Harvey Diamond. May it bring you much happiness. Gee, you drank it all in one gulp. Skippy, that's not very polite. Well, I've got to be going. I... Oh. What's the matter? I... I don't know how I feel, but... Peculiar. You're white as a sheep. <coughs> water. Get me some water. Yeah, but the can is empty. I'll run and get you some. I... Oh. Oh, gee. Daddy. Daddy. Oh, here's the water. Daddy. Here, yeah, what's happened? Oh, Daddy. He fell down like that. Skippy, uh, go out and play now, and don't say anything to anyone about this. You understand? To no one. Yes, Daddy. I won't tell anyone. Uh, hello, Skippy. Uh, What's all the shouting about in here? Yes, there's something wrong. Oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, hello. Uh, Mr. Knight's had a sudden attack of some kind. Uh, I'm afraid he's very ill. Hmm? We must get him upstairs. Uh, Count Santo, will you lift his feet, please? Surely. I don't think that will be necessary, Henry. Well, why not? It's too late. He's dead. Dead? Yes. What happened, Henry? What brought this on? I don't know. We were sitting here discussing the diamond and... The diamond! The diamond! What about it? It, it was right here on the desk. It's disappeared. You know, Lamont, someday, sometime, we're going to go someplace where we'll actually spend two consecutive days when absolutely nothing happens. <laughs> Margot, tell the truth now. You'd be bored to death. Yes, I suppose I would. It's the fire horse in me, I guess. Come on, what do you make of this thing? Well, it's undoubtedly murder. The killer made off with the Harvey Diamond. Well, why did Mr. Barton raise such a fuss about calling the police? Well, I'm not sure. Probably didn't want his name dragged into a bad mess. Incidentally, what's keeping the police... Why haven't they gotten here? We're out in the country, Margot. It'll take them some time. And meanwhile, we're faced with a familiar question. Who done it? Yes. Who... Margot, I think there's a partial answer to your question just leaving the back door of the house. Who is it, Lamont? I'm not sure, but it looks like our continental friend, Count Santo. Well, where's he going? My guess would be to the garage. Come on, we'll find out. Do you know something, Lamont? What? I don't think he's any more of a count than I am. Yeah? Do you know something, Margot? What? Neither do I. Oh. Do you think he's trying to make a getaway? I don't think. I know. Come on, we'd better hurry. Well, what are you going to do? Have a talk with Mr. Santo and find out why he's so anxious to leave here. Oh, but Lamont, that's dangerous. If he is the murderer, he'll try to kill you, too. Don't worry, Margot. The shadow will take care of that. Some lug has put the starter on the fritz. <laughs> what was that? I wouldn't bother wearing out the battery, Count Santo. The ignition wires have been cut. Who is speaking to me? I am called the Shadow. Huh? Shadow? So you've heard of me, eh, Count Santo? Heard of you? Why, why... I thought probably you had. My name is quite familiar to those of the underworld. Underworld? Never heard of that either, I suppose. Who are you? Where are you? I am right beside you. Here. In the shadows. Oh, don't try to look for me. You see, I have clouded your mind so you cannot see me. Well, what do you want of me, Mr. Shadow? May I suggest first that you forget your accent? Well, what do you mean? I mean that when the starter of your car didn't work, you had no difficulty with the English language at all. You're a pretty smart guy, aren't you, Shadow? That's better. Well, what do you want of me? 
I'd like to know why, after a robbery and a murder have been committed in the Barton house, you are leaving it so hurriedly. That's my business. It's also mine. Now listen to me, Santo. Whatever your real name is, I'm seeing to it that you're not leaving this place until the police arrive. So you'd better tell me all you know about what happened in the house. I don't know anything. You're lying, Santo. So I'm lying, but I still don't know anything. Then what were you doing here, under an assumed name, accepting the Barton hospitality? Shall I tell you? Yes, do, Shadow. You came to steal the Harvey Diamond. No, 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 that's a lie. You'd better tell me the truth, Santo. There's been a murder committed tonight. And the finger of guilt points straight at you. All right, Shadow. All right, I'll talk. But you're not hanging any murder rap on me, see? Because I don't know anything about that. That's the truth. How did you become acquainted with the Bartons? I met them last year in Europe. I made them think I was a count because... Well, that's my racket, see? When a sucker gets taken by nobility, they don't feel so bad about it. Well, the Bartons look like a soft touch, so I gave them a play. Go on. I didn't tap them for anything over there. I just had a hunch on it, that's all. I felt I could build them up for a bigger take later on. <laughs> I was right. You mean the Harvey Diamond? I mean the Harvey Diamond. I read about old man Barton planning to buy it, so I looked him up again. I swung this weekend because I knew he'd be getting the necklace. I see. And you came up here to steal it? Yes. My plan was to wait till sometime late tonight. Then I grabbed the stones and make a getaway while everyone was sleeping. That somebody else beat me to it. You wouldn't still be lying by any chance. Listen, Shadow, I'm a high-class, respectable jewel thief. Murder is out of my line. Even murder for the Harvey Diamond? You know, for a supposedly smart guy, you don't follow the ball too close, do you? What do you mean? I mean there's somebody else in that house who wanted that diamond. Somebody who'd kill for it. Who are you talking about, Santo? Well, maybe I'm not saying. Come on, Santo. I know enough about you to put you behind bars for life. Name the killer. Okay. Okay. I'm speaking... Santo! Santo! Cut me. Cut me, too. Who is it, Santo? Who is this murderer? It's... Mr. Mr. Lamont, Lamont, are you all right? Hey, yes, Margo. Oh, I was standing just outside the door and I heard the shot. Did you see anyone as you came in? No, but I heard footsteps running down the driveway. <gasps> Lamont, is he? Yes, he's dead. Come on, Margo. We've got to catch this killer before he makes a getaway. Did you learn anything from Santo? No. Just as he was about to reveal the murderer's name, the shots were fired. <laughs> Lamont, what's that? I don't know, but it came from the house. Come on. What's happened now? What's up? What's the matter here? It's Gibby. What's happened to him? I left him sitting here on the porch. I, I came out and he was gone. And then I looked in the lane at the foot of the grounds and two men had him. They put him in a big sedan and drove away. Skippy. Skippy's been kidnapped. <laughs> Well, he seems to be well enough, Lamont. Did you tell him I wanted to see him? Yes. He'll be right down. Oh, good. Lamont, I can't understand. Why should anyone want to kidnap the child and then, then let him go again, two hours later? I don't know. In fact, Margot, I don't know or understand the happenings of this entire night. The police are out in the garage. Oh? they find anything? Well, they learned that the bullets that killed Count Santo were fired through the back window. <laughs> That's a clever bit of deduction. I found that out when the gun went off. They also learned that Mr. Knight was poisoned. Oh, I see. <laughs> They're making remarkable progress, aren't they? Lamont, have you any suspicions at all as to who killed Mr. Knight and Count Santo? Well, there are only five of us left here in the house. I didn't do it. And I'm reasonably certain you didn't. Thanks. So <laughs> that leaves no one but the Bartons, doesn't it? Oh, Lamont, you're not saying that Mr. Barton... I'm not saying anything, Margot. Yet. You want to see me, Mr. Cranston? Oh, yes. Come in, Skippy. I'd like to ask you some questions about what happened tonight. You carry a gun. <laughs> I know, Skippy. Why? I guess you're not much of a detective, then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Margot, um, would you mind leaving us men alone? Oh, well, if that's the way you feel about it. All right, I'll go down to the garage and see if the detectives who do carry guns will talk to him. Oh, no, Margo, I didn't mean that. Skippy, if, if he tries to give you the third degree, you just call out and I'll come a-running. <laughs> well, Skippy, now let's what see. What was it Miss Lane said you'd give me, Mr. Cranston? Oh, nothing, Skippy. But she said you'd uh, give well, me... Let's forget what she said now. 
instead, suppose you tell me exactly what happened to you. Well, I was sitting on the porch just like Mommy told me, and then the first thing I knew, there were some men standing beside me. I see. I got scared, and I started to call for Mommy, but one of the men put his hand on my mouth, and I couldn't. Did you ever try to call your Mommy with a hand over your mouth? <clears throat> no, no, I, I don't think I have. Uh, what happened then, Skippy? Well, he took me down to a car, and he put me in the car, and we drove away. Yes? And then we... Hey, what was it Miss Lane said you'd give me? <laughs> she was only having fun with you, Skippy. Now, tell me, what happened next? Well, they, they took me to an old, old house that was right in the middle of a big, dark woods, and they, they tied me up with rope and everything, and then they, they went away. And then what? Then they came and got me and brought me back here again. Is that all that happened? Yep. Well, what did they talk like? Talk like? Yes, what were their voices like? What did they talk about? Well, they talked awful funny. They didn't speak American at all. And they had big, long knives. Oh, I see. <laughs> Kidnappers must have gotten scared and brought you back. <laughs> well? Oh, here you are, Lamont. Hello, oh, Henry. What's the matter? It's about the diamond. Well, what about it? It wasn't stolen at all. What do you mean? The police were just searching the late Mr. Knight's clothing. They came across this package. Look. What? Why, it's the necklace. Yes. I've just finished examining it, and there isn't a doubt that this is the genuine stone. But the one that was stolen. It was a copy of the original. It's customary, you know, for all valuable gems to have imitation substitutes. And Knight must have accidentally given me the wrong one first. Then the murderer got nothing but a worthless imitation. Exactly. You know what this means, Barton? No. When the killer discovers his mistake, he'll come back for the original stone. That's so. He might at that. Well, if he does, I'll be ready for him. I have a better idea. You can take this offer for what it's worth, but... I'd be glad to keep the necklace for you until morning. Well, that's very kind of you, Lamont, but... I know it's a rather large order asking you to trust me with such a priceless jewel, but I think you know me well enough. Oh, yes, yes, of course, but... Uh... Good. Then let me have it. Oh, now, look here, Ah, Lamont. that's fine. We can bring it into your vault in town in the morning. Oh, I shouldn't do this. Oh, I wonder who let the dog in the house. I like to play with a dog, Daddy. When I kick him, he makes a funny noise. Don't ever let me catch you doing that or I'll take him away from you. Major? Now, Major, get out of here. Watch, Daddy, I'm going to kick him. Major, Major, stop screaming, Skippy. I've got uh, You'll either have to get rid of Skippy or the dog. And I'd suggest... Yes, I know, but for the time being, the dog is out of this house and stays out now. Quiet, Skippy. Oh, excuse me, Lamont. Now, down, Major, quiet now, quiet. All right, now, Skippy. The dog's gone, it's all right. Are you through talking with me, Mr. Cranston? I guess so, Skippy. Unless you can think of anything else to tell me. No, that's all. Can I go upstairs to Mommy now? You certainly can. And she has my good wishes. Oh, well, thirsty, too. Maybe I better have a glass of water. There's some on that table over there. Mm, help yourself. Would you like some water, Mr. Cranston? Why, thank you very much. Here you are. Ah, thanks. Mm. That water tasted funny. Huh? What's that? <clears throat> Daddy! Daddy, come quick! I think Mr. Cranston's sick! <laughs> I asked him not to do it. Why in the name of thunder did I let him? What do you mean, Henry? Lamont was keeping the diamond for me. That's why he was poisoned. It must be. The diamond, the real diamond, is missing. Daddy, what was the matter with Mr. Cranston? He looked so funny when you carried him upstairs. Hi, Skippy. Why didn't that doctor come down? Why must he be so long? Now, Margot. Doctor, how is he? I'm afraid I have bad news for you. No, no. Mr. Cranston is dead. No, he can't be. I don't believe it. Where are you going, Margo? I've got to see him. Come back, Margo. I wouldn't go up there now. Please, please, Margo. Oh, Lamont. 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 Take it easy, Margo. What? Did you... Shh, yes. I spoke, Margo. Oh. Now, now, dear, take it easy. But the doctor said that you... Yes, I know. He said I was dead. I fooled the good doctor with a little trick of suspended animation that I once learned. I'm sorry, darling, that you suffered from my hoax. But it was very necessary. Necessary enough to break me into pieces like this? Yes, Margot, yes. What do you mean? Just this. As far as everyone downstairs is concerned, I'm dead. You mean permanently? <laughs> no. Just for the next few minutes. Now, you've got to help me with this. How? I want you to go back downstairs... Behave just as you would have if I had really died. Yes? The shadow will join you down there. But first, you must do as I say. Well, 
it, Marco? I can't believe he's dead. Who's dead, Mommy? Mr. Cranston dead? Quiet, Skippy, please. Margo, why don't you get some rest? I don't want to stay in the house with a dead man, Mommy. Please, can I go outside? Oh, that's a good idea, Skippy. Why don't you? Oh, Helen, you can't let that boy out of here after what happened to him before. But I want to go out, Mommy. No, Skippy, Miss Lane is right. I don't care about Miss Lane. I want to go outside. Oh, Skippy, how dare you talk like that to your mother? I'm going out. No, you aren't, Skippy. Do let go of me. I want to get out. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I think you'd better stay right here, Skippy. Daddy, who's talking to me? I'm called the Shadow. Does my name sound familiar to you, Skippy? No. No. What are you doing here, Shadow? And why are you trying to frighten this boy? Because, Mr. Barton, this boy, as you call him, is at the bottom of everything that's happened here tonight. What do you mean? I mean that he is the murderer of Mr. Knight and Count Santo and the thief who stole the Harvey Diamond. That's preposterous. How could a child... Skippy's not a child, Mr. Barton. Skippy hasn't been a child for many years. Not a child? No. He's a midget. What? Oh, I don't believe... Daddy. Daddy, what's he saying about me? If you don't believe me, Mr. Barton, then I suggest you look in his jacket pocket. I think you'll find the missing necklace. But I... Go on, look. Daddy, please, I want to go out. I don't like that man. Now come here, Skippy. No. Why don't you let him search you, Skippy? Well, Skippy, there's no harm. All right. All right. Keep away from me, all of you. Look out, Henry. He's got a gun. Yes, and I'll use it on the first one of you that makes a move. Let me warn you, Mr. Shadow. I can't see you. But if you lay a hand on me, I'll get these people before you get me. Skippy, what are you saying? All right, all right. Can of Skippy stuff. From now on, you can call me by my real name. It's Mike. My karate, see? My karate? Sure, and I got your diamond, too, Mr. Barton, right here in my pocket. Put that gun down, Herati. Not a chance, Mr. Shadow. I'm getting out of here right now. He's turned off the lights. So long, Daddy. <laughs> He's climbing out the window. We've got to stop him. He's running across the lawn. No, no. Quick, Henry, the dog's attacking you. Oh, I can't watch it. I'll go and help him. I'm afraid that my karate is beyond help now, Mr. Barton. <laughs> made you suspect that Skippy wasn't a child? Well, Margot, that kidnapping, for one thing, it was too good to be on the level. It was arranged to get him out of the house with the diamond. And then, when his confederates found out that he'd stolen the phony gem, they brought him back again to steal the real stone. Oh, I see. And to clinch matters, I asked Barton to let me keep the real necklace. And after I keeled over, after apparently drinking the water, I felt him take the jewel from my pocket. Hmm. Nice business. Well, it wasn't a dull weekend. I should say not. Two murders and little Mike killed by the dog. You know, Lamont, I'm going to have a funny attitude toward children from now on. Well, how's that? Well, when I touch them on the cheek, I won't know whether to pet them or feel for a beard. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows.